Today, we meet a real-life Doctor Who, Alex Kaus. Adventurer, fighter, explorer of space and time, he's a theoretical physicist who works with Stephen Hawking on extra-dimensional black holes. What's it like to have the world's most famous physicist as your advisor? Let's find out. He always gave me and, and us as PhD students the the feeling that he, he really enjoyed just the spending time together and so he's a great a guy. You're yeah, a and it's a great time being around. We are PhD comics. And we want to know why. Today we're here with Alex Kaus, great name, and Alex studies theoretical physics with Stephen Hawking. So we're going to try to run with Alex. Matt's going to follow us on the camera. We also have other cameras trying to take this whole event recorded. We're going to jog the entire way. All right. How far are we supposed to run now? I don't know. <laughs> Can I hear you do these ultra marathons? Well, I did one through the Atacama Desert and one through the Sahara Desert. So you basically run a marathon a day uh, for five days, and then on the last day you run a double marathon. So that's like seven marathons in six days. Yeah, it's less a deal than, than you think, kind of. Well, what I really, really enjoyed about it is um, just in everyday life, just all the things you have to keep in your head, and like in there, your mind is completely cleared. You have just this one goal for the day to get from A to B. But how do you find time to work this into your day? Well, I need I need those hours to release, release and have a balance, kind of. Okay, we are all. As much as competition can be a driving force, I feel like in long distance running, there's not a lot of people there with you. You know, you sort no, it's of. That's true. I find it's actually that, like in, in that sense, it feels quite close to doing research as well, right? Because it's. It's a long Procrast haul. Yeah, it is a, it is a very <laughs> long haul. Procrastination like lurks around every corner, kind of, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with running, right? You do the thing step by step. It's not, the, the PhD seems like a huge endeavor in the first place, right? You start somewhere, you take a step, you take a step, and in the end, you get your PhD out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with running. At first, it might seem very long, but it's just one step after another. Yeah. So how did you start working with Stephen Hawking? In Cambridge, the way we have it, it's um, it's a day of speed dating almost. Um, yeah, no, it is. You go from door to door and talk to, uh, to potential advisors, and then it's mix and matching. All physicists like me, you, know, you sort of get this hero complex. How do you break through that feeling? I mean, does that just come after? Yeah, it comes with time. No, it, it, it certainly. I mean, and. and He's an amazing guy and that helps a lot, right? I mean, he, most of the time he was in Cambridge. He's in office every day. If we want to go and see him, he's, he's taking the time. I have this physics problem. I need to translate it into math, play with the math, and in the end can translate that back into physics. For him, he can just completely blank out the math process to then go away and sit down and think about it for a few hours, do the math and realize, yeah, what he's saying did make sense. Where I see math, he sees physics. Do we want to continue on our run? Sure. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to St. James Park. Okay. Yes? Okay. We'll follow you guys. We'll be right behind you. All right, we're going to go. Let's go. for Stephen Hawking, that means that you must really have a, a passion for your field. And yes, no, that's true. You mentioned it was higher dimensional astrophysics, theoretical physics. Something. Yeah, <laughs> higher dimensional black holes, really, or a brain world black hole. The whole thing, I guess, is, is, is kind of complicated. Maybe we should sit down and I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Well, string theory is, is our one theory that we know of that really explains all the four fundamental forces that we know. The problem with string theory, though, is that 
uh, string theory requires extra dimensions. Basically, supersymmetric string theory needs like is ten dimensional. Well, string theory naturally gives rise to objects called brains from membrane. Think about them as a sheet of paper, like a two-dimensional object in our three-dimensional space. The idea is then that our universe is this three brain in this higher dimensional space, and yeah. Well, naively, one would assume that if we would let a ball drop, the laws of gravity we would measure would then be higher dimensional, right? The question that did remain, though, and which they couldn't answer, was what happens when gravity is strong? The classical example there is then, of course, the, the black hole. So do these brain world um, black holes exist? And if they exist, um, do they exhibit um, properties that, well, we measure out there in, in astrophysical black holes? So let me just draw this for you quickly. You can think about the, the brain really as this sheet of paper in a higher dimension, kind of, right? And then perpendicular to this thing, you have extra dimensions. Let's just stay with one and let's just call it W. Basically then, uh, what I'm studying is to think about a black hole uh, or, or to look for solutions which like like in the setup which correspond to a black hole which is localized on this brain so basically this the the the, the singularity um, of the the black hole is is on the brain but of course the the event horizon uh, of the black hole uh, extends into the extra dimensions so the question then becomes what will this 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 uh, black hole look like to an observer who's stuck on the brain like this brain, this, this sheet of paper, is our universe, we are stuck here. How, what will we see? Will it look like these event horizons that we see out there in astrophysical black holes? Or will they look completely different? So you're trying to theoretically compare what a black hole looks like on the membrane versus yeah. what it actually is in all dimensions. I'm trying to solve these equations and find a solution to this equation which, which is a black hole. In a particular class of, of these type of black holes, I was able to solve that um, silly equation over there and prove that, that, that these black holes exist and also that they do exhibit the, the properties that um, yeah, three-dimensional or, or three plus one-dimensional gravity would exhibit. Physics has taken over for philosophy some time ago. It's asking the questions of why are we, how are we, what are we. Whether there are three, three space dimensions or whether there are more, um, no, that's, that's certainly a big question of, 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 of understanding our, 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 yeah, our, well, our, our being and why we are what we are, right? If there are extra dimensions, then uh, a long, long, long way down the line, who knows what use we can make of uh, having extra dimensions in the sense of, I don't know, wormholes, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>2400 fish 2400 fish yeah three and a half minutes each two hour dive six solid days of stalking fish i'm a fish stalker <laughs>